Come in, great. All right, so let me get to Kate. All right, so unmute yourself and tell us what you learned last week, Kate. Okay, we talked about networking last week. And we said that the geographically displaced device re required to accomplish a telecommunication is networking. And we, we learned about the sender and the receiver, the medium through which we can receive an information. Great. And we also talked about put, uh, protocol. We, All right. We um, yeah, I think you are on, on the line. Most people are now. Um, I'm sure they, they now have an idea what we talked about last week. Yes, so um, today I'm hoping right after this, um, when the video is done, I'll try and put it together and put it on the VLE again. So those that um, would want to have a recap of what we did today would have um, the chance to do that. So quickly, we are going to delve into today's activity. So continue on networking. Last week, I remember telling you that um, the main purpose of networking is to share network resources or resources. And the idea is to be able to, you know, connect to other devices and, you know, send files. The files could be in the form of PDFs. It could be in the form of audios, videos, normal text files and the rest. But the whole idea for networking is to be able to share these kind of resources. Now in today's, um, still on the same topic, we are going on to the subsection um, with titled data communication media. Um, I think somebody asked a question about the medium, you know, whether some of the medium can be tangible or non-physical, um, non yes. Uh, a medium can also be, an example of a medium which is not physical would be the, the wireless medium, you know, for instance, on your phone, you are able to connect to MTN or Vodafone wireless, or maybe UMAT wireless network, wireless access point. And this is done by radio waves. So that is the medium in this way is through the wireless medium. The media we, we're talking about here is the wireless medium. All right, so the medium could be tangible or intangible. So basically that is, that is it. Now, in today's, we will begin with data communication media. Now, um, this will address the question that that gentleman asked again. Now, whenever we talk of data communication media, um, there are two main types that exist. We have the cable media and also the wireless me media. So in terms of the cable media, media or medium, and this is where we have a wide network connection or a cable media. So for instance, um, from the ICT unit to the library or even your hostel where you have maybe, if you are chambers or maybe um, um, if you are chambers, the next office. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. Um, so from the ICT to KT Hall, the internet that is taken from the ICT to the KT Hall is passing through a medium which is um, a cable medium. And um, that medium is termed as um, a fiber optic cable. So the cable is fiber optic. Please, um, just a minute. Um, just give me five minutes.
Okay, I'm um, sorry about that. I had someone here. So, yeah, so when we talk of the data communication media, as I said, it's divided into two. We have the cable media, medium or media and the wireless media. So um, with the cable media, um, that is where these three, you'll find these three always there. The twisted pair, the coaxial cable, the fiber optic cable. Now, uh, the ex example I was given from the ICT units to KT Hall, <clears throat> the medium through which internet is served from the ICT to KT Hall is through this, um, the cable medium or media, which is this one, fiber optic cable. So these are tangible medium that you can feel. So that is one, one example. The second one is, for instance, um, from the from the at the library, the, you know the library has a cafe, and at the cafe you have access to the internet. Now, from the ICT to the library, it, the medium that is transferring internet is through the fiber optic cable. Then, whilst it is at the at the library, the medium is coaxial cable. Sorry, it's um, twisted pair cable. What is this one? The cable that I showed you the last time. Um, this is an example of what you call. Okay, sorry. This is an example of what we call the twisted pair cable. Um, <clears throat> sorry. This is an example. So it is called twisted pair because um, if I should cut it right now, inside you see, um, if you can see from here, I don't know if you will see. You no, know, there are some colors in there, some color combination in there. So these colors, so for instance, origin, um, orange and orange strip, they are twisted together. So you have to unwind it and put it together in the right order for you to be able to have internet access. So from the ICT to the library is a fiber cable and from the library um, device that controls the internet, which we normally term as a switch, um, this twisted pair is being run from the switch to the computers that you find at the um, at the at the cafe, so that is also one medium. So, cable media with a wired con um, network connection or cable uh, me uh, media, the computer is physically wired to a network to transmit data. For example, of such um, cable medium are the ones that we listed in here. The twisted pair. So these are literally wires that are twisted to reduce interference and can be um, shielded or unshielded. But the most commonly used one is the unshielded twisted, twisted pair. Um, sometimes we use it for the local area network and also in some cases too for telephones. So the twisted pair consists of a copper wire which is twisted in pairs that transmits data in the form of electrical signal. So um, to be able to have access to it, you need to have you know, some sort of electronic um, signal that needs to pass through. That is how the cable works. So the switch, which is powered, has electricity more or less inside. And the transmission of the internet signals passes through the copper wire, which is twisted pair, uh, to make it possible for your computer to also have access to the internet you know don't forget the computer only understand things in zeros and ones now for the coaxial cable is also a way to transmit network the network is not always internet you know it could be any other thing so the coaxial cable um as i told you it's an example of the coaxial cable is the one that we that connects from the satellite dish to the the multi-tv or the dstv modem 
So our decoder, that is what the Quasar cable is. So it consists of insulated copper wire. This is faster than twisted pair. So in a quiz on exam, if you are asked that um, amongst these Amongst these two, the twisted pair and the quasar cable, which one is faster in terms of data connection or data transmission? Of course, the quasar cable is way faster than the twisted pair. So it consists of a insulated copper wire that is faster um, than the twisted pair and less susceptible to electrical interference. Those network engineers that try to you know, network a whole, an entire building, for instance, at the, maybe the new administration, the network that, has, that um, the contract network um, engineer that did the networking tries as much as possible not to have electrical signals together with these three-step pairs, just to reduce interference. So those that are very good when it comes to networking, they always have in mind that you know, where you have an electrical cable, at least there should be some sort of little distance between the twisted pair cable and the electrical cable that you have. If not, um, signals will be, you know, there will be interference on the signal in terms of data communication. All right, so as I said, um, the quasi cable are used for cable TV and also network connection. Some time back, um, you must, we were, Getting internet access from a company called Gelat in in um, in yes in Israel. There's a company called Gelat. So how were they giving us internet access? And this is they had a medium that they were transferring to us. It was through the wireless signal. So we had those of you who have seen who have gone to the ICT units before. On top of that building, there is a big set light over there. So the signals were being pushed from Israel to the dish that we have here on campus. And at that time, the maximum signal that we, we had was um, 1.5 megabits per second. Um, that was serving the entire university. Now, an individual can even have 1.5 megabits per second. And now, um, unfortunately, um, currently the network speed that we have um, is over it's around 150 megabit per second that is what we've been shared amongst all of us so compare 150 megabit per second to um, 1.5 megabits per second that is about about 100 times increment all right so those times you know the connection was very slow and these were some of the reasons all right, so fiber, for, for fiber optic cable, as I explained earlier, it consists of thousands of very thin filament of glass fiber that transmit data in the form of light waves. So as the name says, fiber optic. Optic has got to do with light. So the transmission of data is through light waves instead of the electrical signals that the TCP and, sorry, the UT, um, UTP and the coaxial use they use electrical signals but for the fiber optic cable they use the um optical you've been able to set up a yeah, oh, sure 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 okay all right so um, the fiber uses light waves so the fiber optic cable can fiber optics can transmit data at a very high speed than and have greater security from interferences and also tapping by tapping it is very easy, those that have watched movies where hackers go into a building and try to, you know, take any of these um, twisted pay cable. Sometimes they will take some of this twisted pay cable, they will cut it to, to re reveal the, the copper wire that is within and they will have some sort of connection. That is a way they, you know, that is called tapping. You're able to tap into it and have access to the network. So if you have, any of these cable lying somewhere, they can have a way to, if your connection, it depends on how you do it. If you don't do it right, you will have a way to tap into your network and be using your network for other things. Uh, in the same way, um, for telephone connection too as well, you know, usually those, the, the landlines the land that we used to have in our, in our homes, 
Um, they usually come with two wires, two copper wires. So some people sometimes, I, I remember some years back, uh, a friend I saw, you know, tapped into somebody's, um, this is illegal anyway, into somebody's um, connection and, you know, he just joins those two cables and he connected it to his household, into his room. So he was able to make calls, you know, at the expense of the individual that had access to it. And uh, so you, you have to find a way to, you know, get all these secure. And in securing most of these, the fiber optic cable, you know, has higher or greater security in terms of these interferences and also the, the tapping. These two are very easy to get access to. All right, so um, moving on again. Um, sorry, just a minute. All right, so moving on. So now let's talk about the types of cable transmission lines. You know, I said when you talk of data communication media, there were two of them. We have the normal, um, which is the, the cable media and also the wireless. So this is, I just spoke about the cable media and I gave you three examples of them. Now I want us to delve into the types of cable transmission lines or media that exist. There are three main ones that we normally um, talk about. In fact, we have the simplex, the half duplex, and also the full duplex. In fact, these, this particular slide usually come in the exam and quizzes. So whenever we talk of um, simplex, we mean to say that data can be um, transmitted or can travel in just one direction. An example would be maybe a radio station. So for instance, I have this MP3 player that has access to, um, it's a speaker actually, it's also an MP3 player and it has FM radio also on it. Now, um, the only thing this can do is to receive data from the radio station or FM station. So data is transmitted directly from the radio or FM station, and this only receives it. So we are able to have, maybe listen to some of these FM stations, but not communicate with it. So if data is transmitted in one direction, then we term it as simplex in terms of the transmission line. Um, so we have the simplex, so data can only travel in one direction. An example is what I just gave, the radio station, or sometimes even the TV stations, you know, they send, or even um, they send the, these digital signals to us. We are able to access it. We can't do anything about it, but just to receive them. We can have a two-way interaction with the data that is sent to us. So that is about a simplex. Now, when we talk of half duplex, <coughs> So as it says, half duplex. So it means data can travel in both directions, but this transmission can't be done simultaneously. So an example is a walkie-talkie. Um, I don't know if any of you know what a walkie-talkie is. Uh, security men, let me see if I can pull um, I can pull one out in here for us to see. A minute, please. Um, so our security men. <laughs> um, let's see, walkie talkies. A security men, you know, sometimes when they are talking, so this is an example of a walkie-talkie. Uh, some of you have seen how it looks like. So these are examples of walkie-talkie. 
Well, let me increase that level. So. All right, so this is it. Yeah, so for data to be transmitted, you know, by data, data could be in the form of voice, it could be in the form of video, audio, and all of that. Yes, yeah, so with a walkie-talkie, if you if you realize, anytime one person wants to talk, he has to wait for. So, for instance, they will begin by probably saying, um, "Hello, um, one, two, three, over." Then the next person at the other side, upon hearing "over," knows it's time for him to, you know, talk. So he also speaks, and when he's done, he will say "over." So both of them can, are unable to talk to each other at the same time. So right now, let me use this as an example. Um, I've muted all of you. Now, if I ask a question, the, fact, uh, the, the, the reason, for, um, if I, uh, once I've muted all of you, I'm able to talk to you and you're able to listen to what I'm saying. But you're unable to talk to me because I've muted you. Now, the moment I give you access to talk, then you have you are able to also communicate with me. So that is how the half duplex works. So data can travel in both directions. You can talk to me, all right, but I will have to give you access to talk to me for you to be able to do that. So data can travel from your end and can also travel from my end, but we can't talk together at the same time. So that is how um, before the class start, started, I was talking, other people were also talking. So that is full duplex. So data can, for full duplex, data can um, travel in both directions at once. So whilst I'm talking, you can also talk. Other people can also talk. So data can travel in and out at the same time. Um, with full duplex. For example, it can also be sometimes you make a call, you make a phone call, you, and whilst you are talking and you're not even done, the person can interject and also say. So that is how full duplex really works. But for um, th that was just an example. But in, in real life, usually when you talk of half duplex, a typical example is this one, the walkie-talkie, which um, is being displayed on the screen for you to see. So that is how the walkie-talkie works. Um, yes. So yes, it, it, um, Peter. Yes. So this is also a radio handset. So you can see that is the antenna, and the signals are transmitted online, and they, they have specific channels that you know they go through to make this communication. All right. So the full duplex. Uh, smartphones, the way they were able to, you know, communicate with each other, talk and all, do other things. So that's an example of a full duplex. And somebody can also say, you know, like for instance, WhatsApp. Um, with a full duplex uh, um, transmission, I'm able to send you a WhatsApp. The, the moment, whilst I'm sending WhatsApp, you are also sending WhatsApp. We can also uh, we can have both directions sending WhatsApp at the same time. Um, so that is that could also be termed as a full duplex. All right. So that is an example of how the walkie-talkie looks like. So in a quiz, if you are asked what is simplex in terms of data transmission, what does it mean to say simplex, half duplex, or full duplex? Please, these are the explanations that um, could be given. Now, those of you who have not seen the, um, the data communication media in terms of the cable that I talked about. This is how it looks. The twisted pair cable that I showed you, um, it looks this way, like this. So we have, as it says, twisted pair. We have these copper wire in there. They are twisted in, the, in pairs based on the color. So we have, and this would have to be arranged in such a way that at the end of the day, it will look like this one. So this is a terminated twisted pair cable. When we use the term terminated, we mean to say, um, you know, the original states, you know, now we have quit 
we, we, we put the right, um, you know, the right devices at their ends to make it possible to use. So that is how the termination looks like. So this, we have the sleeve together with the RJ45. You know, the moment you terminate the twisted cable, um, pair cable, this is how it will look like. This is a quasia cable, the explanation I was giving earlier. When you have it terminated, that is how it looks like. So this is where, this is what goes into the computer. Humphrey, please stop writing on my screen. Humphrey, stop that. Yeah, so we have this. That. Uh, let me see if I can clean this. All right, so um, okay, so yeah, um, the, um, let's see, yeah, you can ask your question. Okay, sir, so, um, please, my question is, um, suppose in exam, they ask us for um, examples of the keyboard media, the types of keyboard media, um, sir, so please, what you've told us, um, they are. You, you wanted to give us an example of the duplex and then the um, half duplex, but then say these are wireless. If they ask us for actual examples of the wired duplex and then half duplex, what, what answers will we give? Um, that is a very good point. I think you didn't get me right. Let me go back again to the slide so you get it. Now I'm talking about the transmission medium. You know, there's a transmission lines that are, that exists in terms of data how the traveling happens. And these are the terminologies that exist. Simplest, half duplex, and full duplex. So it has nothing to do with um, whether it's a cable, it's a cable that we are talking about, or it's a wireless medium. These are the, the terms that exist whenever we talk about transmission lines. I don't know if I'm making sense here, Desi. You get me? I've unmuted yes, you. Sir. Yes, sir. All right. So whether it's wireless or wired, it's just about the same. These are transmission lines that we normally talk about when we talk about um, how data is transmitted to from one place to the other. It could be wireless, it could be cable. But the, the terms that we normally use for these transmission is simplest, half duplex, and also full duplex. All right. If you have a question, you can just raise your hands. I'll come in there and we continue. All right, so that is about the, <coughs> sorry. That is about the, the termination of these cables and um, you know the original cables and when they are terminated, what you get in here. So the, for the fiber optic cable, that is how it looks like. Um, I don't know, maybe we'll, we'll see if we can, those of you, um, if, if you really want to have a feel of some of these things, um, if we have time, I think I can schedule this with, um, so we can go and go to the ICT units and have just some few minutes with them. That is possible. So the ICT unit has a lot of these things in there. So that shouldn't be much of a problem. Okay, so that is about it. Now let's talk about the wireless media or the media, wireless media. You know, we're talking about cable and the wireless and the transmission, what happens, it could be duplex, it could be half duplex, it could be full duplex. But in the area of wireless medium, maybe this slide, maybe this, that slide should have come after this one. So you would, um, I think this would have got my point very well. Now data is, data in wireless, in the wireless media is transmitted by using electromagnetic so an example of electromagnetic waves could be in this form, like a microwave. Some of you, um, you see how microwave, microwave works. You know, you put your food in there, you, you only see some lights happening and by the time you realize your food is warm. You don't really see the microwave itself, but you see, all you see is these waves doing magic to your food. So in the same way, um, electromagnetic signals um, are also used 
in the development of some of these technologies when we talk of the wireless media. Of course, there are times people will say, when an MTN mast is raised or is mounted on your property, there's a high probability that, you know, these signals will pass through you and probably give you cancer. I think there are literature that also says it wouldn't do anything to you. There are, there, you know, there are different school of thoughts. But of course, um, there might be some sort of, um, you know, side effects over a long period of time. So those things also needs to be, you know, put in, 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 in perspective, yeah. So whenever we talk of the wireless media, these transmission happen by the, uh, what do you call it? Via radio waves, microwaves, light, and also infrared. Yes, somebody asked about infrared. Yes, yes. so infrared, I don't know, those times, if an example of an infrared transmission is your remote. When you want to change channel on your TV, by using the remote, you are sending signals from the remote to the TV. And that is also a, a transmission medium. So these go through um, these radio waves. So if the distance between the receiver and the sender is large, it is not economical for us to link them directly. So instead, what we can do is to link them through available telecommunication networks, such as telephone networks, cellular um, telephone networks, or um, satellite networks. I, I gave an example of us having internet access way from Israel some years back, I think somewhere in 2009 or 10. But now uh, ISP, which is um, internet service provider, is Vodafone. There is another, which we call GANET. That is the Ghanaian um, Academic Research Network. So virtually we have two network, uh, two ISPs. In fact, these, um, these acronyms, I would want to at least be conversant with them. And let me take this opportunity to reiterate this. The lecture material for the, the class is already online. So please keep visiting the lecture material and we're reading what is in there. Most of the things I'll say here are there. Some I will mention here, but they are not, they might not be in the lecture material. And there are some few things that um, I might not also say here, but within the lecture material will be there. So when you do read and you have any question, as I said, you can put it on the forum. I've been answering questions there, and some of you, you guys have also been answering questions there. That is wonderful. So please um, put it up there, and we will answer it as, as we can, as we move along. All right, so let's continue. So we have, so based on the, the distance, the distance will tell the type of wireless media to use. Now, for the wired media, for instance, the twisted pair cable, it also has a maximum uh, length that it can go, this cable. If it goes beyond 100 meters, we have a term we call attenuation. I don't know if it will be, um, this, this, will, uh, this is not in the handouts, but that term attenuation, um, attenuation is more of the loss of signals over distance. So if um, based on distance, you know, you can lose your signal. So with a twisted pair cable, what I just showed you, after 100 meters, the signal, um, your, if, if, for instance, one of the end of the twisted pair is connected to the switch and another connected to your laptop, and that cable spans a distance of more than 100 meters. At a point after the 100 meters, you will not be able to have internet access or signal because the twisted pair is limited by distance. And the maximum distance that it can hold is the 100 megabytes, the 100 meters. That is how come we said the quasi cable can travel fast at a longer distance than the twisted pair. 
So attenuation sets into in the twisted pair after 100 meters. I would want somebody, I would want you to find out the distance that um, the coaxial cable can also travel before attenuation sets in. The loss of signal would set in. Um, an answer to that can be put on the on the forum page, so others can also see. All right, so now radio waves can travel for a longer distance. Therefore, a microwave, sorry, microwaves can travel for a longer distance. And because of that, microwave data transmission is used for high volumes, long distance point-to-point -point connection. So for instance, um, MTN, um, you see they are mass, they have these microwaves. The mass contains, there is one just by the library. Uh, so though you see some the, the microwave, you know, dish in there where, um, okay, let me ask, the question is, I would want you to find out the maximum distance that the coaxial cable can, tra um, can travel before there is a loss in connection in terms of attenuation, setting in. I told you that for a twisted pair, the maximum is 100, max 100 meters. So look out for that for coaxial and look out for that for fiber optic. Fiber optic cable, don't answer me here. Put it, don't put it on the page. Let, let's put it in the forum. I would want you to do that. The fiber optic, for instance, have different distances. So I would want you to also let me know about that. So that is for coaxial cable and also for fiber optic cable. So based on the type of coaxial and um, fiber optic cable that you are using, you'll be able to know the distance that should be put in there. Uh, so I would want you to check those out and put that question up and let's have you answer it on the page. All right, so yes, so as I talked about, so MTN uses these micro, uh, microwave disks to transmit data at long distance. So you can have one of the MTN disks somewhere here and another at a very long or uh, far away place. Now, those at Gold Hall, um, you know, I gave an example where ICT is giving internet access to the library together with maybe the KT Hall. KT Hall, as I said, fiber cable has been laid from here to KT Hall. Now, those are good hall. You see the distance that's, you see how far good hall is. And if UMAT is supposed to lay a fiber optic cable from here to good hall, you can see, can imagine the damage that could happen. You know, cutting across the road from here, campus to Good Hall. So how are you getting internet access? You are getting internet access through a media which is wireless. But for campus, it is wired, which is cable. So now behind the environmental department, between um, the lawn, the environmental department and also the mathematics department, you know, there is this green spot where you have this lover's bench in there. Um, where the polytank is. There is a device that has been mounted up there that um, is called a Cisco. It's, a, it's actually a radio, a, a radio, Cisco radio. So from the mathematics department or the ICT unit, there is a cable that is moved, a quasi cable that has been put in there, laid on the ground to the device that is mounted at that particular place where the, the, the polytanks are, um, are. So up there, that is the connection. So the first connection is the radio, Cisco radio, which is up there. And there is another one at Gold Hall, which is mounted on top of Gold Hall. Those of you there will probably see it. So that's radio um, is facing directly to the one on campus. So from Gold Hall to the one on campus, we have something we call line of sight. So this one on campus and the one at Gold Hall, they are in, they are able to see each other. So there is a trans, they can transmit data wirelessly to each other. 
here to here, you're able to transmit data. So that is how come um, everyone is able to have access to to um, to internet through this medium, but not through the fiber optic um, cable. Yeah, somebody, um, let me see. The red and green lights at the top of your phone screen. Um, from the smartphones that we have, they're not, uh, I don't think use infrared now. Infrared is normally not be, it's, uh, it's uh, most of the smartphones that I know, they don't use infrared. So I can't say, speak to that. Um, Kujo says um, it depends on the walkie talkie. But usually it is not used for long distances, yes. And the maximum range for walkie-talkie is five miles. But some designs can go as, okay, that's great. Uh, I don't know about that, but if this information is coming out right, then beautiful. However, the range differs um, greatly depending on the surroundings. Uh, maximum distance listed, yeah, that's true, yeah. In fact, um, there are issues with um, wireless uh, media, you know, when it rains, when it rains, data that is transmitted from one point to the other, you know, you can see that is how come when you are watching your DSTV and it rains, the signals get scrambled, mainly because the rain is able to interfere with the transmission of this signal wirelessly. Let's have Duncan. Yes, Duncan. Duncan, you can ask him. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yes. Uh -huh. Oh, Duncan, come again. You can ask your question. All right, let's continue. When it's ready, uh, I think he would ask the question. Yes. So so that is about radio waves. So radio waves is normally uh -huh. Sorry about that. Okay, that's fine. Okay, so yeah, so for the radio waves, it is normally used for transmitting data for short distances. An example is within an office setting. So yes, in my office, I have um, a wireless access point. So if you are here, just like the ones you have been seeing on the in the classroom, the white round one, those are called access points. I will explain the difference, um, I think, as we move along. So those are radio waves. They, they transmit data through radio. Now the uh, telcos, they use the microwaves a lot because they want to be able to send data at a very long distance. So that is about the um, microwave and also the radio waves. So the ones that we normally use in our offices or in short buildings, like in the in the classrooms, those are transmitting data using radio waves. And that also has a distance that it needs to cover. Of course, if it is in a room and there is a block, like a block behind me, the building block is also able to interfere with the transmission of signals. So if the network engineers, when they are setting up some of these things, they put into consideration all these. You know, they know that, okay, from LH1 to LH probably nine or something, you know, the signal will go down because of the blocks that are that is within the building. So they probably would have to mount one at LH9 to also serve people in that area. So for the radio waves, it doesn't transmit data at a very long distance. It does it for short, short distances. So in the building and in the houses, in the house, we can use some of these. Infrared is widely used um, for short distance connection, for example, between the remote connection and also the TV. So you recall that um, the further you are away from your TV, the impossible it becomes to be able to operate or talk to the TV, operate the TV using the remote. So it can be used for communication between computer and, and between computer and other um, peripheral 
equipment. So most of our computers have um, what do you call it? Bluetooth signal. They don't really have infrared in there. So Bluetooth can also be a way to also transmit data for short distances. So the further you are away from the Bluetooth device, the unfortunate thing is you will not be able to receive data that is being transmitted to you. Oh, yeah, sorry about that. Okay. Now let's talk about what we stem as network topologies. Uh, whenever we talk of network topology, this is a term um, that you should have in mind. It's, it's mainly centered on the way the network is arranged and also configured. So anything, anytime you hear of network topology is the configuration and the arrangement of these devices on the network. So there are ways to do that. These are examples of network topologies that exist. In fact, the first three, the bus, the ring, and the star are normally used. But the most used one in institutions and places is the star topology. So for the bus topology, all the devices are attached to one cable. Though um, simple to construct, um, it provides a single point failure. I'll show you an example of how the bus topology looks like. That all the devices are connected on one cable. And at the ends, you have a tokenizer that is terminating the cable. Now, um, right after the bus, we have what we call the ring topology. The ring topology also looks similar to the bus. But this time around, the ends are attached and are not susceptible to a single point of failure. So it's similar to the bus, but ends are attached and it's not susceptible to the single point failure. You know, when you have one cable, I'll show you in the next slide. For the star topology, you know, all the nodes, if you recall, I said any device that is connected on the network, we call it a node. If you have your phone connected to a network, your phone is termed as a node in it. It's a network term. So all the nodes or devices that are connected on the network are attached to a central device and because of that, it makes it unsusceptible to failure. Um, if one goes down, others can work. But the moment the central device goes off, then all these devices become susceptible to failure. So that is how the star topology looks like. So you have a central device with all these nodes connected to that central device. So if one of the devices goes off, um, computers or the nodes goes off, it doesn't affect the other nodes or computers that are on the network. But if the central device goes off, that is when the issue comes in. The last one is the mesh topology. Well, I talked about the first three and I said, um, so those are the main basic ones. The mesh now, what it does is it incorporates all these three um topologies that you see up there most institutions and organizations don't really um, use the mesh topology mainly because it's very expensive and the moment um, there is a failure on one of the topologies you know it, it doesn't necessarily affect the others because of the integration of all these i will show you this now let's let me show you from the first one we have this is the bus network topology that I talked about. I said all the devices are connected to one single node of cord or cable. So that is a bus. This so this computer is connected to this cable. This is connected to this cable, this connected to this cable, and this connected. To this. And at the end of this cable, we have something we call tokenizers. That is what does the termination of the cable to allow the transmission of data from here to here to work. So this is how the BAST network topology looks like. It uses a single central cable to which each device is in a linear fashion. 
So I talked about the ring topology. This is how the ring topology looks like. Ring. That's like a ring. So it connects computers and other devices one to the next in a loop. So you can see it goes in the loop. There is no central hub or cable which is helping in the transmission. So for this, for an example, something like this, if this goes off, you know, there is no way this will be able to connect and um, to communicate with it. If this is broken, these devices will not be able to talk. But for the star topology, because each of these devices are connected directly to the central hub or switch, if the cable for this one breaks, it's only this computer that is unable to connect to the network. If this one also goes off, this cable also goes off. It's only this computer that will not have access to the network. And the moment this device goes off, it means all these devices will not have access to the network. So because of this, uh, most of these, most of the institutions, they really prefer using the star uh, network. So at a point, um, for instance, as I said, from the ICT unit to the library, we have one network there. From the ICT again to KP Hall, we have another network there. From ICT to Gold Hall, there's another network. ICT, ICT to Espet, School of Petroleum. So these, these nodes are all connected in the, in the star network to the ICT. So as you may know, this is the ICT unit. There is a fiber connected to KT Hall and all of that. So if the fiber, maybe there is construction going on on campus and the fiber cable from ICT unit to KT Hall is broken, automatically, it's only KT Hall that would not have access to the internet. But School of Petroleum, Administration and Library will have access to the network. So that is what makes the star network topology the best of topology. But with these ones, if there is a break in it, all the devices would not have access to each other. So that is why most institutions prefer using the star network topology for their network designs. So in this case, with the mesh, the integration of all of these will make make up the mess topology. And that is expensive because you have to do this and that and put all of these together. What is, what, what is the spelling of the bridge between the bus connection? I don't understand the question. If you can come again, blessed, come again. Now, um, for network devices, these are things that you should have in mind. In fact, um, I know most times in the exam, it does come. So we have the network interface card or network adapter. So every device that has access to a network has something we call the network interface card. So your phones, have something we call a network interface card, which is wireless. It's a wireless at, um, interface card. For your laptops, that port that has access for the RGA 45 or the network cable, twisted pair cable to enter, is what we call the, the um, it's what we call the network interface card. So virtually every device that has access to the to a network has what we call the network interface card. It's an electronic component that enables computer to come to be um, to have access to a network. So come in, it comes in a variety of ways. It could be internal, it could be external, it could be wireless, it could be wired, it could be a PC, USB. So therefore the network interface cards, of course, we have USB network cards. I think there are some pictures in other slides, which I'll show you. Now we have a hub, and we have a, um, a WAP. The hub, like this one here, the hub is just like what we call a switch. 
Um, there is a difference between a hub and a switch. Usually, you see the hub and you see a switch. If you don't take care, you might not be able to know the difference. And the hub most most times is not being used by being used now, but of course, some institutions also have the hub. The hub is also an electronic device for connecting multiple twisted pair. Well, say from here, you can see I'm saying multiple twisted pair devices together, making them to act as a single network. Hubs are simple devices that forward all messages to every device attached to it. I'll talk about the hub and the switches. Since we are here, let me talk about the switch too as well. So the switch also does something similar, just like the hub. Let me see if I can show you a picture so you have you appreciate it. So sometimes the switch and the hub, they look alike, but the difference between it um, technically, this is what we call a switch. And let's see, and hub. I'll show you, they look so much alike. Now the switch is intelligent than the hub. So if you can look at this one, for instance, you can see this is a hub, this is a switch. How do you know the difference between them? <laughs> Now, let me use this one. I think this can give us a very good one. Now, we have a next year hub here. There's a hub. And this is a switch. And this is a, a router. For the hub, you can see you can put in RG45. That is a twisted pair cable in here. Of course, the switch also has these places so that you can put the RG45 in there. So the difference between the switch and the hub, it looks so much alike, is that when data is sent from, let's say my computer is connected to this particular side and your computer is connected to this one. If I want to send you some sort of information, the moment I send it, that information will be broadcasted to all these ports. So if there are other devices connected onto this port, they might be able to listen to our communication, what I want to send to you, which is number two, which is not the best of ways. So this is a bad, um, this is what makes the hub unintelligent. Data that is supposed to be meant for respective ports on the, the hub is sent across to all of the on the hub. So that can give rise to what we call eavesdropping. People can um, eavesdrop some people's data, and which is not the best of things. However, the switch, if my computer is connected to this port and yours is connected to the, this port, and I want to send information, the moment I send the information, it goes directly to your port. It doesn't transmit it to all these um, ports before you are able to pick the data yourself. No. So the switch is more intelligent than the hub, but they virtually work just about the same way. Um, are ring bus mesh network still relevant? Yes, it's still relevant. You know, the network engineers normally use it. It depends on what you want to do. Usually we normally incorporate the mesh topology mainly because um, of what we call red, um, redundancy. So for instance, as I said, um, if a portion like KTO goes and there is a redundant mesh topology that has been done, the moment the connection from ICT goes off and there is a connection from maybe School of Petroleum to um, KT Hall, because the connection from ICT to KT Hall is off, School of Petroleum will be able to send network signals to KT Hall because that connection has been made. And that is how the mesh topology really looks like. So we combine, it combines the ring, it combines the, um, the bus topology and also the, the normal um, star topology. So that's the combination of all these. So when one goes down, there is still a connection from one point to the other. So connection never goes off. So that is how it works. So that is how switches and hubs looks like. And there's a router from here. 
uh, from this side, um, I'm saying a switch, an electronic device that is similar to a hub, but has a capability of transmitting data from one device to another directly. So that is able to transmit data directly to the recipients without having to press broadcast it on all the, the ports, as I explained to you. So it's a multi port bridge that connects two or more LAN segments. Yes. So you can have one network, KT Hall, another network library, and we can have a switch connecting these two networks together. That is also very possible. So wireless access points. In fact, all the, all the access points that you see um, at School of Petroleum, they are all called access points. All the wireless devices that are mounted, the white ones, we call them access points. Um, it is access point because Generally, if you want to have access to the network, you connect your cable to the switch, then you connect one part of the cable to the switch and the other to your computer, and you have access to the network physically using the cable. But because um, we have so many students coming into the classroom and doing other things, we can't give these twisted pair cables to each student to go to the... Um, the server room or the ICT units to connect to a switch there. So that would be very, um, would be a bad practice. So if a student wants to have access to the internet, then we give the student a cable, go to the ICT unit, go and put it in a switch so that you have access to it. No. That is why we introduce what we call the access points, wireless access points. So what the wireless access point does is, when you connect your network interface card, I'm trying to use the term, so uh, that is an NIC, NIC. When you connect your phone's network interface card to the wireless access point, the wireless access points connect you to the switch. So behind the wireless access points, there is a cable that is connected to the switch, which is located at the server room. So there's a cable that has been laid from the server room through to the through the wall to the access points where a cable is connected from the access point to the wall jack that you see over there. So to have access to the network, your network interface card, which is your NIC, connects to the access points, and the access point now moves you to the switch. That is how you're able to have access to it. So wirelessly, you're able to connects to the switch which is in the server room through the access point. So the access point is more or less seven as the, um, the mediator between you and the switch at the ICT unit or the server room. So it's a central device that connects wireless LANs to other networks. So that is how the access point works. Now we term something as a bridge. So I'm going to ask this question. So it says, a bridge connects two LAN segments and only forward uh, messages that needs to go to the other segments, yes. Um, in layman terms, can someone tell me how a bridge works? Anyone? You can raise your hand and I'll call you and you just explain. How does a bridge work in, in, in our day-to-day -day life? Anyone? Oh, anyone, just raise your hand. I told you there, is, there isn't much of a wrong answer or something here. If you are wrong, you find ways to let you know the right thing. Anyone, anyone, how does a bridge work? What is the essence of a bridge? Can somebody tell me? Yes, anyone. Araba. Okay, let's have Johnson. Yes, Johnson, unmute yourself. Okay, Um. so please, when there is a gap between um, a path and then another path where we want to cross, we can use a bridge to kind of serve which will move us from one place to. Yeah, that, that is great. I think that's a very good point. Thank you very much, Johnson. So in the same way, in networking, we have something we call a bridge. So let me use this scenario to explain it to you. Um, you see how 
Let me pick up this half, for instance. Now you can see uh, for this particular half, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight pots. Now, if we have about 15 or 14 students, let's say we have 14 students in the class, and we want all of them to connect to this eight pot hub or switch. I said the switch and the hub, they are just about the same thing. But it's just that the switches are more intelligent than the hub. And most, most institutions and individuals use the switch, of course, but still the hubs are also in, a, in existence. So there are 12 students in a class. They all want to get themselves connected to the network. But the access point, sorry, but the switch or hub that we have, it has only eight ports, but there are 12 students. What do you think we can do to make it possible for all the 12 students to have access to, um, to the network? So for instance, if the internet is maybe on this one, if there's internet on this particular switch or hub, what can we do to put all of these people, 12 students, to have access to these spots? Can anyone tell me? Anyone, 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 anyone? If you are right, you, you, your answer is on me. I'll send you 10 cities. Mm -hmm. Anyone? Or you want me to say the question again? Okay, let's have Edmond. Yes, Edmond. Uh, okay, yeah. um, as um, Johnson said, for maybe we have um, two parts, then we want to cross from one place to the other, and we are going to use a bridge. So, for the 12, um, 12 students, for each and everyone to get connected to the network, I think we are going to use um, a bridge to get to, to get them connected. Yeah, so how, do you, how do you use that bridge? How do you use that bridge? Um, like the wire, the wires. Um, you, you join Everyone, them. You want to start. <laughs> you know, the point is eight. We are eight points, and the, but the student number is um, is twelve. It's twelve. Yeah. Yes. So, how do we use a bridge to connect them? <laughs> yes. Let's listen to your plus. <laughs> Okay, Tiflos, you can unmute yourself. So, uh, I think they can patch. <laughs> how, will, how will they patch? <laughs> can we have another person? They can't patch. One person to one pot, one hole. One person to one hole, one person to one hole. So patching is not available. Let me bring this one out. I think it's the same thing. Anyone? Okay, let's have Inketia. Um, okay, so I'm thinking of this, that there will be a cable which will have about like the number of students 12 right so about 12 pots and then at the end of that same cable there will be, be like a cable eight. yes are you saying a cable like this you know this cable so how can we have 12 mm. okay so i'm thinking of something just like um you see there are times that you see this charger which has more than one <laughs> <laughs> That's okay, what I'm yeah. to you want to be smart. I get your point, but no. Okay, let me <laughs> let me put this again. Um, 
Um, this is what I'm going to do. Okay, let's hear Solomon before um, we continue. Yes, yeah, Solomon. Oh, Somu, Somu, Al Hassan, yes. It's Shahaku. You can unmute yourself and talk to us. <clears throat> the bridge, like a pair of connectors, which can connect two servers to be the student connect to it. Mm, no, 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 no. <laughs> so nobody wants me to take him to lunch, eh? You you send the money. You can send the. Oh no 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 no. All right, so okay, let me introduce another um, another thing. We can have two of these um, hubs or switch. This is eight. We can have another another eight hub. So we have one and another one two. How can we do this to make sure all these people, these twelve people, will have access to the network? Anyone? Yes, Adenli, Adenli. We can connect the one we already have to the one we added so that they, be, they become- uh, um, Thanks again, direct me so I can put my mouse there and see what you mean. Uh, the one there, uh, pointer is on it. Yes. We can connect what? Hello. Uh, we can know. put one of the network to one of the ports. We can put Say, what? Hello. Huh? You can connect one of the um, network cables to one uh, port of the decoder or the thing that we have to the other one will be added. So we put so so that someone. Okay. So hold on, I'm coming. So I'll connect this one. Uh -huh. Yes, sir. To one of the ports here. Uh -huh. uh, yes, yes, sir. And you, uh -huh. I, and you connect the other one to the other um, other port so that they become one, so that Good. data from this can be transferred from data to this. Good. In fact, you are right. So in that case, how many people can have access to this network? That means in that case, maybe one, two, three, four, maybe eight people. Um, um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight times two. That means sixteen people. Um, come again. I think you are not getting the question. Now we have been able to use a cable to connect one to one of the ports, and we are using the same cable the other end to another port. Yes, sir. So that is the bridging. So we've been able to bridge these two switches or hubs. Mm -hmm. So how many ports are available that people can have access to? Eight. Right now, we have eight ports. Eight ports. You have connected one. You have connected okay, one. Seven. Two. seven. Okay. So how many people? Now you you've combined, you've bridged these two. Yes. So how many people have access to it now? Can have access to it now? Yes, you are right. In fact, we would have 14 people having access to this. So that is how the bridging works. So... We can have a network cable here connected to another from this port to another port. So that will make these two devices as one unit. So we can have 14 people having access to this particular um, network because we have been exactly we've been able to bridge the network. So um Adele, WhatsApp me, text me your Use the chat to text me your phone, um, your number. Your lunch is secure this afternoon. Gaddafi, the question has been answered though. You still want to answer a question? Or you want to ask a question? Okay, Gaddafi, let's hear you. Okay, and so then, 
forget to send me your uh, send me a direct message on the on the chat page. Sir, me yes, yes, Gaddafi. Sir, I want I, I want to find out if you preach these two halves, the the second one, and then the first one, will they have the same? They will they transmit the same equal network because. We are sharing the first one to the second one. Will that also have the same internet the connection than the other one to the other one? Yes, they would. They would. You know that is the essence of the bridging. So, for instance, if there is a road, one road at this on my right, and there's another road on my left, and there is a water or river in between these two roads. Why do we bridge? We bridge so that we will be able to share these two roads, to have one route. So the bridge will serve as a medium where these two roads can share, um, can, um, these two roads can share, you know, their path for vehicles to pass through. So that is the essence of the route. And I mean, the bridge. So this is one so road, a road, yes. The reason why I ask is that, um, let's say the first one, it has, it has uh, eight ports. Yeah. And then you are sharing one port of the first one to the second yeah. hub. So yeah. I was thinking that the only particular one port that you are sharing to the second one will be that particular data that will go to the other. Uh, so the meaning the second hub will be sharing the port that you share from the first one to the second one. Uh, um, no, not, that, that's not how that technology works. If you recall, I was saying that with, with the hub, when data is sent from, assuming port one to port two, that same data is broadcasted to all the ports. Do you get me? So if there is internet on this one and you send information to this one, that information goes to everybody. In the okay. same way for the switch. So for instance, okay, let's use this. Let me use this one for instance. I have um, MTN fiber broadband at home. Now, I want to connect all my people to the internet. All I have to, all my people, maybe there are seven people in the house. They are all using cables. All I have to do is to connect, let them use the cable to connect to the seven ports. Then the last port, what I'm going to do is to connect that last port to the MTN fiber broadband. And automatically, every device, that is on this particular hub or switch would have access to the internet. Okay. You understand that? Yes, so sir. the essence of the bridging is to be able to um, connect these devices from one segment to the other, and they will all form as one entity. So that is how the, the bridge works. So sometimes the bridge can be a wired connection, other times too, it could be a wireless connection. There are times, for instance, um, like the wireless access point that you have, we can have something called, we can repeat the signals by using any of so another wireless device to also connect, to repeat the signal to other people that are not having access because they are a little further away. So that is possible. So the fact that we've been able to connect this one to have one and have two makes that those two have as one entity. So in actual fact, those hubs will have will be will serve as about a 16 port hub. Although individually there it's um eight ports, eight ports. But it's sharing set, equal data. Exactly. The data is sent um will be shared amongst all of them. Okay. And of course, mind you, each with the switches, each port has a maximum throughput that it can hold. So for instance. Um, if the, um, we have gigabit switches, we have 10, 1000 megabit switches. So it means the maximum throughput that the ports can have is one, one gigabit. So if you have um, data transmitting at that particular speed, that is one gigabit that will be all the ones that are connected to that particular port. So that is how it works. So, um, this gentleman, I think the guy doesn't have, he doesn't want his money, so I'll go. Okay, he sent it to me, I can see it. All right, so now let's, um, let me go through this quickly. So that is about this. 
So the clients. So you recall from the other one when I talked about this client server architecture. A client is a computer on a network that requests resources or service from another computer or on a network. Most clients are workstation computers. So for instance, your phone, if you are using it to access the VLE, the VLE is a server. It is serving so many clients. So you, you are accessing the VLE, so you become a client. So you are a computer on a network that requests resources from the server. So you serve as a client and the server, which is a VLE will serve as the main server. And what it does is uh, it's a computer, which is also in a network that manages shared resources or also other activities. Of, of course, the VLE is not the only thing. The student portal is also a server that does other things. A router, can we use a hub connected to a switch instead of two switches connected together? Yes. In fact, the hub is just about the same as the switch. So in some cases, somebody will even say it's a, it's a hub. So you can have all these things connected to each other. They serve the same purpose. In that, the only difference is the hub is not as intelligent as the switches. And there are some switches that we term as managed switches. What they do is you can manage it. So the ports that you saw in here, those ports for a managed switch like this one, those ports that you see in here, I can configure it in such a way that I can block all the ports in here. So even if you come to my house and I've blocked all the ports and you connect a cable to it, you will not have access to internet access because I've blocked it. That is how the money switch works. So you can manage the each individual port on the network. If we can set up VLANs on some of these networks, that is a virtual local area network. Now let me talk about the router. Um, a router is a device that works sometimes works as the wireless access point. You know, at the I told you at the rooms that you see the at the LH ones when you come there, those access points that you see they are not routers because they don't uniquely identify you on the network. They only send you to the switch which is inside the server room. But for a router, if a router is mounted there. The moment you connect to a router, the router will give you access to its local area network. So it doesn't need to come to the switch. So a router can have a local area network on one side and have um, maybe an internet connection at the other side. So if you want to, if you connect to the router, the moment you connect to it, the router will give you an access, an IP address that will uniquely identify you on the network. But if you connect to an access point, the access point can't give you an IP address. It will rather route you to the switch. And the moment you are in the switch, the switch also can't give you an access point. The switch also probably would have something we call um, a DHCP server that is also connected to that particular switch. And that switch, that DHCP server is the one that is going to give you the IP address. And that is what is transmitted to the access point to you, the individual that is connecting to the access points to the switch. I don't know if I've said so many things at a go. <laughs> so access points don't give IP addresses, but routers give us um, IP addresses. So routers and as, um, IP, um, access points, they, they are similar. They could be, they are very similar. But it's just that access points don't give IP addresses. It's actually the routers that give access points. That, that gives IP addresses. Client computer, users computer for sharing surfing, server provide network services and gateway. So anytime you connect to a network, a device that connects the LAN to the wide area network so that the data can be sent to the local area network. So when you connect to an access point, then it takes you to, now if you want to browse on an investing network, we have something we call a gateway system, a gateway. So that is where you pass to go, to go through the internet. So that is how the gateway really works like. I think I'm going to end here. And God willing, next week we will continue with um, the types of network, which is a local area network. So let's end here and give you room to prepare for the next lecture in the next 15 minutes. Thank you very much. Um, so this gentleman, um, yeah. So I'll hit you up with your lunch money. 
Um, okay. All right, thank you.